Hello everybody and good morning. Sunday morning and I hope that you all have a blessed Sunday today. Uh, we're supposed to be expecting a little bit of rain I guess but probably more so on Monday tomorrow. Uh, the temperatures are gorgeous here. I wish to stay like this all winter. Wouldn't that be nice? It would be nice. Okay, let's do a little talking with Elon Musk. Speaking during Telsa's Q3 earnings call, spoke on a wide range of economic issues including Telsa's performance, his bid to purchase Twitter, and the possibility of a global recession. Uh, that's on everybody's mind, isn't it? Yeah. I can't emphasize enough. We have excellent demand for Q4. We expect to sell every car that we make for as far into the future as we can see. Musk said regarding Telsa. Is that Telsa? Tesla. Sorry about that. Tesla. I can't pronounce that one. <laughs> the factories are running at full speed and we're delivering every car we make and keep operating margins strong. With renewable energy resources becoming more and more important and the U.S. government offering tax rebates and incentives to purchase electric vehicles, tell, um, Tesla is positioned well for the future. Tesla reported adjusted earnings of 1.5, that's $1 and 5 cents, higher than the projected of 99 cents. While earnings were up, stock prices were down around 5%. Below experts' predictions, Musk, Musk said about the company, I'm of the opinion that if we can far exceed Apple's current market cap, in fact, I see a potential path for Tesla to be worth more than Apple and Saudi Armaco combined. And that's A-R-A-M-C-O. Arm Aramico, Ramico combined. Musk said that he was overpaying for Twitter, but that he is excited about the Twitter situation, he continued. The long-term potential for Twitter is an order of magnitude greater than its current value. Some uh, Tesla shareholders asked Musk about the state of the global economy and its impact on business. And Musk, Musk said, China is experiencing a recession of sorts, and followed that by saying, Europe has a recession of sorts driven by energy. As far as North America goes, Musk, sa Musk said, North America is in pretty good health, although the Fed is raising interest rates more than they should, but I think they'll eventually realize that and bring them down again. Musk, in typical fashion, was optimistic and realistic at the same time while also giving investors a glimpse into Telsa's upcoming semi-truck and pickup truck offerings. While some think that Twitter deal will not work out the way Musk believes, he is clearly excited about everything that is happening in his companies, from SpaceX to Twitter and everything in between. Well. I hope he's right, but those electric cars, those batteries, remember those scooters on the video I did earlier this uh, morning? I just hope that there aren't a bunch of lawsuits because one of those batteries exploded and killed somebody in those cars, electric cars. My goodness, it must be the rich buying them cars middle class and low income and disabled like us, there's no way we could ever afford that. No, so I wish him the best. Yeah, I do, I wish him the best. He has a, a great outlook for our future, for his future. <laughs> I don't know about our future. I'm still giving that some thought, aren't you? Oh well. All right, let's go to the next one here. And this is sad. NYC's illegal alien accommodations upset American homeless. Now, I probably don't even have to read this article. 
because you all know what it means. Our homeless are living in streets, in snowbanks this winter, in the cold areas, in cardboard boxes, hardly anything to eat, hardly enough clothes to keep them from freezing to death. And where are these illegal aliens in our country right now? In a nice warm room, plenty of food, plenty of food stamps, plenty of heat, anything they ask for. I can't blame the homeless for being upset. We can't take care of our homeless, but we can take care of border enters that aren't even legal yet in this country by an open border and drugs galore and cartels galore. Oh, please. In a twist dripping with irony, New York City has rolled out the red carpet for illegal migrants shipped to the metro... Metro, oh, let me think a minute. I get so upset <laughs> over these articles. But, you know, these homeless people are United States citizens. Metropolis. Okay, for illegal migrants shipped to the metropolis. So much so that regular American homeless people are getting fed up with a preferential treatment. This don't make sense, does it? Can any of you make sense out of this? Even the homeless, they're getting ripped off. They don't have a warm place to sleep, warm clothes to wear, food to eat when they get hungry. They have to go searching for it. And most of them, if they are lucky enough to get a, a disability check or a, a uh, social security check most of them get robbed and killed murdered by somebody robbing them some crazy nut that needs some drug money oh on Tuesday city leaders debuted mayor Eric Adams solution to receiving thousands of border crossers the tent city on Randall's Island is nothing short of luxury accommodations compared to the regular homeless shelters that unfortunately natives are stuck in. And it shows a picture of the of the senders right here. I mean they look nice. They're clean. But then people criticize our homeless. What are they doing? Shaking hands with these illegal immigrants? Drug dealers? Cartels? Well probably, especially if they're hooked. That's right up their alley, ain't it? For example, the first group of 500 men were welcomed with three meals a day, fluff and fold laundry service, a TV, video games for entertainment. Zach Isco, emergency management, management commissioner, told journalists that people can come, rest, relax, and kick up their feet. Culturally appropriate. Did I pronounce that culturally appropriate? Appropriate for cultures, cultural. Meals are provided along with a pair of popcorn machines, Xbox consoles, game tables, 12 phones for international calls. Snacks are also provided along with a drink service 24 hours a day. One homeless resident of the nearby Help Meyer shelter was outraged by the special accommodations from Mayor Adams' tent city. Baron Hines, 36, told reporters he's been living in a shelter on Randall's Island since August. Hines described the building, which is just 350 yards away from the tent city for illegal migrants, as inundated, inundated with bugs and foul odors. He said he has to sleep on a raggedy bed with a hard mattress and that the food served there will kill you. As for my great families, many are being housed at the Luxury Row Hotel based in Times Square. Wow. Let's all pile in our little scooters and 
wheelchair, electric wheelchairs and battery operated and let's head for the luxury robe hotel in Times Square. <clears throat> Part of that facility has been converted to an intake center for the homeless asylum seekers. The city's Department of Homeless Services reportedly struck a deal with the hotel in late summer to accommodate hundreds of families. As for Mayor Adams, he explained that there are always going to be people who feel like someone is getting something better than them. Only this time, those with complaints have a point. Yes, they do. Take care of our people first. New York City is reportedly shelling out $5,300 per month to house the asylum seekers in the mayor's tent city. It doesn't take a homeless person to recognize a great situation when they see it. And frankly, the city should be getting more of that kind of expenditure. They can't take care of our people, but they can take care of it out of our country people. That, that, that makes me sick. You know, that makes me sick. <laughs> well, whatever. God bless you. And you are a blessing. And I'll be back.